Okay, our last chapter is chapter 11, which is on number theory. And 11.1 .1 starts out here with factors and multiples. So remember, a prime number is any whole number with exactly two different whole number factors. Uh, so for example, five is a prime number because the only two factors of five are one and five. One times five is five. And then a composite number is a whole number greater than one that has more than two factors. Okay, so we're gonna start out here by looking at what's called the sieve of Eratosthenes, which is a method of finding primes. So I'm gonna show you this little applet and as you can see, if you just pull up Google and enter the sieve of Eratosthenes applet, the first one that shows up is this one at Viznos. So if you go in there, this is a neat little applet. And so basically this is a method for finding primes. And the way it works is you click on the first prime number, which is two. And I'm gonna start out by clicking the color red. I think that's what it starts with. Yeah, see how that has the black circle? So I'm gonna start with red with the black circle there. If I click two, it colors in not only two, but every multiple of two. This slider here can increase the animation time. See, I don't know if you saw that but up in the left-hand corner there, it says set that animation speed. So all the way to the left makes it go really fast. And then I'll click on the next prime number, which is three, and then every multiple of three also gets highlighted, right? So six got highlighted because two times three is six. Nine got highlighted because three times three is nine. 12 was highlighted because four times three is 12. So these are composite numbers, so they all get highlighted, so those don't count. It's like they're blocked out. Right now, the ones that are just kind of blocked, squared in here, two and three, are the leftover prime numbers. And the next one is five. So I'm gonna click that, and it's gonna highlight every multiple of five. So all the multiples of 10 are already highlighted because those have a factor of two in them, right? Two times five is 10, two times 10 is 20, two times 15 is 30. These all have factors of two, so those were all redded out. So I'll click five and it's gonna finish by doing this column here. Okay, and five is a prime number. And then the next one is seven. And then all the multiples of seven are redded out. And you can do different colors, but it starts looking a little wild. Like if I do the yellow, now all the multiples of 11. And you can see it does actually highlight some kind of cool patterns. Um, also, if I click on this broom and then click 11, it, uh, you know, erases those colors. So I'm gonna go back to the red and click 11. And then all the multiples of 13 and 17 and 19, 23, etc. until all that we're left with are the prime numbers. Okay, so this is kind of cool. I also have a worksheet that I've uploaded to Canvas. Let me show you. So in chapter 11, it's right here, the 11-1 Eratosthenes. And I've also included it in uh, the lecture notes. Toward the back here, I'll show you. Right here. 
Okay, so this is a handout where you can go through that same process by hand. You know, you start by crossing one out. We couldn't do that on the applet because one would have wiped out everything. But then we go with two, circle two, and cross out every multiple of two, and then go to three, circle that, etc. So that's kind of cool. And if you wanted to work through that, you could. Okay, uh, next up, some more vocabulary. And we have talked about this before. If m times n equals some number p, where m, n, and p are all elements of the set of whole numbers. So that symbol there, that's is an element of, and w is the set of whole numbers. Remember the whole numbers are 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. So these two numbers multiply together to give you this number. Then we say m and n are both factors of p. Equivalently, p is a multiple of m. p is also a multiple of n. And here I've given an example. You know, suppose m was 2 and n was 3. 2 times 3 is 6. <coughs> so 2 and 3 are factors of 6. 6 is a multiple of 2. 6 is a multiple of 3. m is a divisor of p, right? So m is a divisor of p. 2 is a divisor of 6. 3 is a divisor of 6. P is divisible by M, so 6 is divisible by 2. It's also divisible by 3. P is the product of M and N, right? 6 is the product of 2 and 3. Also, we would say M divides P, so 2 divides 6. So all of that language is really important. We have to be precise with our language as teachers especially. And then here's a definition. Um, if A and B are both whole numbers, A is not zero, then A divides B, and we write that divides using a straight vertical line. A divides B if and only if there exists some number X, also a whole number, such that A times X equals B. And again, just even using this example, you could see 2 divides 6 because there exists the number 3, such that 2 times 3 equals 6. Okay, so that's the definition of divides. Um, there's also an activity, and I took this from the PowerPoint, so I do want you guys to go through the PowerPoint. Um, but it really focuses on some of the vocabulary practice, like to use 6, 8, and 48 in sentences that involve factor, divisor, product, and multiple. Right, 6 is a factor of 48. 8 is a factor of 48. Uh, 6 and 8 are divisors of 48. 48 is the product of 6 and 8. 48 is a multiple of 6. 48 is a multiple of 8. Now notice you could also make a rectangular array with six and eight. You could draw six blocks going down, like six rows, and have eight columns, and you would end up with an array of 48 squares. All right, so I'm just gonna move on. This is something that we would have done in class, kind of working through all these in groups. Um, and for number two, we just kind of went through that above. If M is a factor of N, is N a multiple of M? If 
m is a factor of n, then n is indeed a, a multiple of m. Okay, so I'll let you guys just kind of work through those. Um, this is one of the standards for mathematical practice that mathematically proficient students try to communicate precisely. They're careful to use vocabulary that is appropriate to the situation. So all of this vocabulary of factors, multiples, divisors, products, and so forth can be very challenging, yet it is critical to mathematical communication, right? It's important when we're discussing with other people, when we're reading and writing, and especially when you're teaching, to use all of these vocabulary words precisely. Uh, these words extend through the curriculum to algebra and beyond. Okay, also in, this is a copy of the textbook, and these would be some of the learning exercises that we would do in class, so I have them kind of circled here. And then I also have the solutions for section 11.1 .1 here, so you can look at those. Okay.